Okay, welcome back to the top ten list. I think we're on number eight, correct? Yep, number eight. Number eight, okay. Well, we did a little bit of thinking together. We've, we've got our restaurant picked out, but before we get to that, uh, my number eight game of all time, definitely, yeah, definitely going to have to be The Long Dark. Now, if you've even glanced at the channel, you're going to notice there's, what, a hundred, probably a hundred or so videos at least? Collectively, yeah. Because I've got a couple yeah. of sandboxes that go 30 episodes. Yeah. This game is awesome. It is essentially, it's PvE. It, it's like, you're not surviving against zombies like you would be in Seven Days to Die. You know, you're just thrust into the Canadian wilderness, and it's freezing, and, you know, it, there's like some sort of a... It's like a geothermal yeah. like storm going on. Yeah. yeah. So the weather is absurd. Like you're, you're you're struggling every second not to freeze to death and not to starve to death. And they literally just throw you into it. Yeah. You, you, have, you, you start. You, you start. And that's it. You start with like a couple of pieces of clothing on you and like maybe a, some water and a, and a candy bar. That's it. But immediately you have to survive. Yeah. And that's the best part. It's a constant urgency to keep moving to keep searching out these houses there's wolves and bears and as of late there's a moose or meese or whatever the plural of moose is <laughs> they'll attack you i mean the game is amazing it's got its own art style yeah you know, it's kind of like a pastel kind of look in a way yeah yeah looks really good it does look really good it fits <clears throat> that game really well it does uh yeah the game is just awesome i mean I would tell you to take my word for it if anyone, if everyone else didn't say that about every other game in the world. But as far as just like being a fan of survival games where you're just having to forage for supplies and to you know set up a base and like not die from just life, like wilderness itself, other stuff like that. Very, very satisfying game. I've probably got two or three hundred hours in it on Steam at least, maybe more than that. Um, I highly recommend this game. It's got a campaign. It's got a story mode to it. They're still working on putting that out, but um, that's the biggest. I think that's the biggest downfall is they're just so it. slow with putting that out, right? Yeah, and I mean, you know, they did the Redux and redid the first two episodes, and it looks even better than it did. Yeah, it, it does. And they so. they added. I'm not really sure exactly what all they added. I don't think it was anything that would have affected much past episode two. Yeah, probably nothing too crazy. The ending's probably still but the same. It's on. Uh, well, of course. You play it on PC, but it's on PS4 and Xbox One. Mm -hmm. so, Multi-platform. I mean, yeah. It's it. only like, what, $20 probably? Maybe $25? Probably, probably, but now it says only about $20. Yeah. It might be a little more, but... Um, on the channel, though, you did your first sandbox, and it kind of just abruptly ended. And then you did your other sandbox that was, like, very... Thorough. You know what was weird about the first sandbox? I got to Timberwolf Mountain and then just ended it. Yeah. I didn't even climb it. And then it was the actually, most you were recent at the cabin. One, you were at the cabin yeah. at the very bottom. And I ended it there like a like a loser. And then in the most recent <laughs> sandbox, I climbed. I beat the crap out of everything the game had to offer. And I got and I you guess, all the challenges. You yeah, know, I, I beat all the challenges. I all beat the everything. challenges. Well, all the challenges are recorded. I think the only one that's not on the channel is the archivist or archivist or however it's said. Oh, it's not public yet. It's not public. Yeah. But it's recorded and it's up and it's like 13 episodes, so... The game is very addicting. You're going to want to check it out. You're going to want to play it, too, if you like anything relative to this type of game. So, uh, yeah, that's it. The Long Dark, number eight on my list. All right, now my number eight game is an older game that launched with the GameCube. Luigi's Mansion. Such a fun game. It's like Ghostbusters, except Luigi. Did it launch yeah. with the GameCube? It launched with the GameCube. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, of course, when I got my GameCube, it had already been out like four or five years. And this was already a player's choice game. Got it, plus a few other games with my GameCube when I got it. And uh, it was so fun. And it still looks so good to this day. And it was... Um, I don't know. I can't say enough good things about it. I know me and you played it countless times. We, we had to have beaten it at least four or five times. Oh, together. it's more than that. And each time we... Progressively did... Or got we progressively did better. better. And it wasn't until like years later... Cause I, it seems like we tried to beat it once. And it's like, how are we not getting like the rank S mansion? Mm -hmm. Like the best, you because, know, because all, ABC, all throughout and, the game, you're collecting money and gems and stuff and like that. And we had found hidden places... But you have to water the plants. Who knew you had to water the plants? You and get you, those gems. Oh my gosh! So much money. And then you get if you water all the plants, you essentially can and collect everything else. You can essentially get everything. I'd, I'd say we hundred percent of the game, wouldn't you? Oh, easily, yeah. easily hundred percent of it. And it was funny because it was supposed to be back then. They were 
trying out 3D stuff or whatever. And so when the sequel to this game came out like 12 years later, it was on the 3DS, which, you know, I was okay with because it was a new game. It was good. It was fun. It wasn't as good as that one, I didn't think. But I get why they put it on the 3DS. And then they remade Luigi's Mansion and put it on the 3DS. And, like I said, I guess that makes sense because, uh, whatever. But there's actually achievements on the 3DS version. I really? Yeah. I've never played it. I've never, I don't even think I've actually opened it. It's sitting right here behind us. I've never even opened the game, I don't believe. But there are achievements, and it would almost be worth it to go through and play. But now they're releasing Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Switch, which is going to be great. I'm looking forward to that. But Luigi's Mansion, such a fun game. If you've never played it, you can probably find it for about $30 or get the 3DS version or whatever. I didn't really agree that the 3DS version was $40 bucks Oof. for a you know, 13, 14-year-old game at the time. Well, it was older than that. Yeah. A lot older than that. But regardless, Luigi's Mansion, now I'm just rambling. Such a fun game. So many good memories with it. And uh, that is my number eight. All right. And let's... Go ahead and reveal our number eight ranked restaurant in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Well, really, this one is a franchise as well. There's there's more of them in, across the world, I suppose, or at least the United States. Yeah, I'm not really sure how many there are, and I can't even remember where it started. <laughs> Every time we ate there, there was like you know, a know, I think, I think it's in like Nebraska or Kansas. I think it was like in the Midwest. Anyways, it's Freddy's. Um, what is it? Is it Freddy's Custard? Or steak burgers, steak, steak burgers and custard, something, something like, that. like that. We did, yeah. we, we did this with Smoky Bones. We couldn't figure out what we yeah. the, even the name of it. But it, Freddy's. It's Freddy's. It's basically um, it's it's like your like it's like a steak and shake. It's like a steak and shake. If that's a thing that you know of, it's um, the, the type of burgers they serve are steak burgers. They're steak burgers. Some people call them smash burgers yeah. um, up north, I think, but. It's well, oh man, it's, they it's they are it, it's, so it's mind blowing how good that fry sauce is. Oh just for God. starters, the, the, just the to start there. Sauce, the fry sauce, is, <laughs> the voice <laughs> so, so good it makes you tear up, man. Oh, it is. It's good. And normally, of course, you know we were big steak and shake people, but when we went there, when Freddy's opened in Bowling Green, it's like okay, well, we've got to try this. And we went there. The fry sauce was amazing, but I got the patty melt. And the patty melt is so good. That's actually all I've ever got from there. I can't speak on anything else other than the patty melt. Well, fortunately, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I've it up a little bit. got two or three different types of burgers. And oh, there's, I think the best part about the burgers, they have those l- full dill pickle yeah. slices. Yeah, like, the dill spears. Not, yeah, not just a little round pickle. Mm-hmm. No, it's a whole s- slice of a dill pickle laid like two or three of them on each burger. Yeah. That, for starters, that's amazing. Secondly... Yeah. The French fries are my favorite type. They're are they, what are they called? Is it restaurant style or shoestring? Shoestring restaurant really style. Really tiny little long French fries. Mm-hmm. I love those. Yeah, types. they're so good. The fry sauce. I couldn't tell you. We, I, I don't know what's in it, but it tastes I have amazing. No clue, but it's so good. I you're you're going to want to pour the fry sauce on your burger. That's yeah, that, I mean, we would go up there and get two or three cups of it and just use that to dip whatever we were eating in, mm-hmm. besides the French fries. And to to top it all off, they have. Chicago style hot dogs. Yeah, and you can get sauerkraut on those hot dogs and like mustard and stuff. And oh man, if you're not a sauerkraut fan, you're probably like shaking your head at that. But oh lord, <laughs> I don't know if you can speak on it, but I can actually speak on the dessert actually being really good too. No, I can't. You you'll have to do that. The, the dessert is really good. Yeah. Got like a dirt pudding. I don't know if anybody has any idea what that is, but it's like Oreos crumbled up in ice cream, which it's actually custard. Similar. Yeah, their stuff is Similar. custard. That's right. Slightly different from ice cream. But it's dirt pudding because they crumble Oreos up and have gummy worms in it. It's like, you know, I sound like a three-year-old talking about it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. And amongst other things, they have, uh, I can't remember what else I've tried from there. It's been, it's actually been a little bit since we've ate there. Yeah, it's probably been a year For, for me, anyway, it's been a little bit. But, um, yeah. It's pretty good stuff, and the price, really is, is. the price is fair. Yeah, the price is fair. It's good, not bad Good food. At all. I mean, definitely worth checking out. Definitely. So, yeah, that is number eight on the list. Uh, stick around. We'll come back with uh, number seven in the next video. Thanks for watching.